live and learn. Yulia and Ina with you here. Today we continue the conversation and invite you to join the discussion at facebook.com forward slash live and learn podcast. Forget your mistakes. Learn your lessons. Remember your lessons. As we um, said previously, better done than perfect. But then on our way to perfection, we rather do something than give up. Or think. When you fix the fixed, do you get growth? If you want to stay in the same place, you need to run very fast. If you want to go move forward, you need to run even faster. Happy to see you. And as usual, I'm really curious about what you've learned this week. That's a nice start of the podcast, you know, sharing some kind of the things that overwhelmed us, stunned us, or somehow made an interesting and lasting impression. And uh, one of the things that actually t- grabbed my attention was the new word. Uh, as you know, that's my passion to, to uh, discover new words. And this time it was window swapping. What do you think window swapping is? Window swapping. I can try to guess and... Uh... Swapping a dirty window for a clean one. Swapping images of windows or what you see in the window with the neighbors uh, opposite in the house opposite you. Swapping, swapping. No, no other idea by now. What is it really? It became a uh, viral trend in the internet. So the window swapping is a thing. It's an application or just like add-on in the browser. Uh, normally it works on the mobile phones, on the cell phones, or handy, as German people call it. It's um, yeah, something that uh, shows you the random windows all around the world. So more than 50,000 people downloaded it. So, so they recorded the windows and the window, what, what they can see out of the window from their own apartment or house, put it on the platform, and now you can just swipe one after another, seeing what other people can see without any people. So basically, uh, yesterday I had to travel, you know, in the lockdown time, it is very nice thing, you know, when Schengen zone is still down and it's going to be by the end of the August, at least, I had an opportunity to see a window in Hokusima in Japan, a window in Canarian Islands uh, with, you know, getting dark and thunderstorm and, you know, the trees going down to the uh, bending down. And I saw a beautiful Japanese garden, almost still. And the next window swap I do, and uh, there comes a lake in a Norwegian landscape or something. So basically, and they all are part of the apartment. So you, you can see the window frame and the weather and where the sun is. The weather, the heart oh, is so beautiful. Because just like in a couple of minutes, you're getting around so many places and you try to see who do you know from that place what do you know about this culture uh what is your impression is the sky clear or not and it is quite a meditative 
thin because it doesn't have the time when it stops and it doesn't push you to, to go very quickly. So it's up to you to take your time and to enjoy one scene or another to the um, extent that you want to do this. So it's kind of looking in other people's windows, actually. From other people's uh, windows. Just like you are staying in the virtual Airbnb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you come for one night, you take what it is as an apartment, a uh, landscape from the window, every 10-15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you sent a link to me and uh, unfortunately I couldn't uh, use it, but now you're telling this to me. I just think, okay, maybe it was better because if it had worked, I would have spent all evening just <laughs> scrolling and swiping and <laughs> looking from other people's windows, imagining that uh, I'm elsewhere. I just... Fabulous thing because uh, I shared it with a couple of friends uh, on Facebook and uh, w one of them told me that um, he would like to have a screensaver out of it. That would be a nice idea. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. interesting. But actually, if we think about it, what, what makes such things go viral? It's, is it just the no curiosity idea. of people looking from what, the way other people live, the way other people make their, like, a part of their interior, a part of the exterior? What, what, what is it? Is this curiosity? I think both curiosity and um, dissatisfaction with the way you live at times or a wish to put yourself into other people's shoes and seeing how you would feel there, an attempt to live uh, other people's lives. Oh, now I am, I am in a philosophic mood. <laughs> a sneak peek. <laughs> Talking about the philosophic mind, uh, yesterday I, I read an article about the place in Paris that was the most touristic one for 12 years in the beginning of the last century. Can you guess what is that? No idea. What is it? Not Notre Dame, not even Louvre, not even close. That was a Parisian morgue. Oh. That, that was the biggest attraction from 1905 to 1912-ish. That was a special place underground in the fortress just next to the Notre Dame de Paris, where uh, the lost bodies of the suicidal, of the uh, people who committed suicide or who jumped into the Seine River or who were just, you know, somehow killed. So all these people were just taken from the river and put there so that the uh, relatives could see them and recognize them and then to bury but the funny thing that very quickly that became an attraction that held 40,000 people per month in Paris in the beginning of the last century. Crazy. Not, Notre Dame de Paris, de Paris didn't have such an attendance. Can you imagine? It's just because of the very same philosophic uh, thing that you mentioned because people were curious how they were imagining what would this person be there were the clothes that uh, this person possessed uh, someone was without the i don't know limbs without the hand or was his head bashed or something like that and they were like for two three three weeks uh, after the death a lot of people were just going there and having this philosophic moment to see themselves yeah, you to know. see themselves dead, to see themselves seen by others this way. Yeah, to see themselves uh, not the way they are now, but the way they don't know they might look like. Is it still this, like, fatal curiosity? That, that is so funny, because that's, that's what actually drives a lot of people to try to, to see themselves from another perspective, maybe? in somebody else's eyes. It makes me think of uh, one of my favorite uh, stories or novels, rather novels, uh, by Luigi Pirandello. 
an Italian writer, and the novel is called uh, Il fu Mattia Pascal. So the person who once was called uh, Mattia Pascal. In English, it's translated the late uh, Mattia Pascal. While in Italian, it's called, uh, in the original, yeah, it's called uh, Il fu Mattia Pascal, uh, where fu means uh, once, once upon a time, long time ago. So it doesn't actually mean late directly, but the translator caught the point because the story goes that um, this is a person who was not satisfied with uh, his own life. And uh, when uh, somebody's dead, uh, drowned body was found in his town, he thought it was a good time to disappear. And so his family, his wife, his uh, mother-in-law kind of recognized him in that dead body. And uh, he just disappeared. He went to other places, somewhere on his way he won a lottery and so he said okay now I can live the way I want he changed his name that's why he was not yet the late the dead yeah but the person who used to have that name and didn't have it any longer he changed his name he started uh, his other life etc I won't spoil uh, all the plot to someone who uh, wants to read it later but the idea that struck me there is actually an attempt to live another life okay imagine you're dead so this life is finished every moment you have a chance to start a new and uh, this is what he did then again I won't tell what happens later it's interesting and, no spoilers uh, no spoilers anymore, but yeah, so to me, this is an idea of uh, living, if not somebody else's life, your other variant of your life changed, not the same routines that you were uh, dissatisfied with. Go and read, live and learn, and then, uh, <laughs> what is that uh, software called again? <laughs> window swapping <laughs> and uh, go window swapping <laughs> so uh, then somehow this uh, creative way out of the character that I described can be perceived like on the one hand uh, it's dissatisfaction it's loss of uh, sense of living it's trying to uh, reinvent yourself and then a creative step, how he was recreating himself. And uh, here somehow it makes me think of uh, the difference between the fixed mindset, a person could just continue living his boring life and continue being dissatisfied. And uh, on the contrary, a growth mindset that uh, means something absolutely different. Could we talk more about it? What is it? What does it mean to have a growth mindset? This is something that always fascinates me because it's not even a scale. It's not a feature. It's not a feature of character. It's not something that I can or I cannot or I learn to do, right? As we discussed in our previous episodes, what the skills are. So here we have another word. We have the word mindset. It's just like you're setting yourself to see the things in a um, perspective, in a development, in uh, using the challenges as your drivers, using the challenges as opportunities. You know, it's, it's weird to see the, the world in black and white or saying that somebody has a fixed mindset or another has a growth mindset. You can imagine a class of 20 people or 25 people sitting uh, together and you cannot say that 12 have fixed mindset and 15 have growth mindset, for example. No, it's, it's not about that, but more or less how many 
everyday situations, everyday challenges, can you see as opportunities? Can you see as the breakthrough? Can you see as moving forward? Proverb says, it's not about falling seven times. It's about standing up eight times, which makes a person successful. So for me, this is the very same almost apocryphic way how to understand if the person believes in himself, in, the, in them, themselves or not. Because we're talking about dynamism. We're talking about the dynamics of learning and prioritizing learning, prioritizing lessons on mistakes. It's like, you, you know, this, this phrase, forget your mistakes, learn your lessons, remember your lessons. So, yeah, to, to me, this is something that uh, the way a person responds to the hardships, big or small, on criticism, on feedback, if the person is able to handle criticism and to see the opportunity to grow from the feedback. Or if the person sees only, oh, I was criticized, maybe I'm doing something wrong and I'm just not worth it. Instead of using this as, where can I do better? Where can I grow more? What can help me to develop? Where it can bring me? And so one thing that you mentioned uh, is uh, learn from uh, your mistakes, perceive... Uh, where you fell, for example, paradoxically, not as failure, but as opportunity. See opportunity in uh, where someone else would see failure. And that would mean uh, growth mindset. While for fixed mindset, what is characteristic is actually seeing failure in a mistake, seeing failure uh, where otherwise you could have learned something. Yeah, a challenge like something that is too much for you, like a criticism that is a tidal wave upon you and uh, then the person is not able to, hand, uh, to handle it emotionally. The funny thing that it doesn't really matter what is the age of the person. So a person can, can have the growth mindset 87 years of age, you know, just like seeking for more and more. I, I, again, I read a story about someone's um, mother-in-law who changed passport, changed a place to live, and just went away from the city to the seaside because she said that in this way, I, uh, I can just swim every day enjoy the promenade, you know, this strolling on the seaside and um, spending the time with the young girls, not the peers, uh, instead of, you know, taking care of my son. So I things done, he's married, I'm <laughs> washing my hands, yeah. So this is a growth mindset anyway. So I want to, to grow, I want to leave, I want to see uh, what I can embrace, change, embrace and change. You know, this is one of the biggest things that scared everybody in the uh, COVID time is that everybody was so scared of change, scared what to do. We don't know what to do. We don't know uh, what it can bring. We are scared. It can bring the uh, downturns. It can bring economic down, plummeting down, and so on. But the question is, if people are, can handle this opportunity to to maybe change something, maybe change the vision, change the mindset, which is the most difficult things to change, basically. Yeah, because it's mindset. It exactly. is set. And uh, I don't know the uh, story behind what you are saying about the woman who uh, decided to change something. And uh, I would perceive this uh, in uh, two ways. One is what you say, uh, wishing to do something that you haven't done before, not being, uh, not feeling the bond, yeah, and uh, being free and feeling free to do whatever you want. That's one perspective. Another would be an escape, 
And uh, it's important also to see what really lies behind this decision, whether it's uh, freedom or escape. To me, it has got both la layers and maybe even more. Uh, so each person should uh, be very careful about the reasons behind their decisions, what to sure. do, where to do, where to go. The same as you uh, said about this uh, COVID lockdown, there were lots of families who were feeling this disaster of staying together at home. And uh, this is something that people normally escape from in the normality, in inverted commas, when they go to work, when they leave homes to go to the office, for instance, kids leave home to go to school. And then, boom, and you have to stay together. Then what is there? Is that uh, an opportunity? Does it give you energy to be together, to feel you are together, to give each other opportunities for growth? Or is it the thing you have to do and uh, you have no way out? Then. It, um, it puts you into a cage. So again, the same situation that can be a sign of freedom and opportunity and an invitation to growth and the same situation to someone else could be a cage and uh, an invitation to fixed mindset. You know, you're absolutely right. I'm, I was most probably over ecstatic about giving the examples, but anyhow, I can try to formulate it as um, when you understand a challenge, a problem, as a failure, as a disaster, as a limit to what you can, as a limit to your ability, as when you see, okay, when one sees the uh, situation as that the further I can go, I should probably stay here. Or I don't know what's ahead, I should probably be where I am. That's why we're talking about uh, the comfort zone and going out of the comfort zone, which can be quite scary, which can be quite adventurous, but as well risky. The question is what we see is as a threat, as a limit, then it is a fixed mindset. If we see it as a opportunity, as a learning point, or an opportunity to train yourself, to adapt to something different, that's why we can talk about people who are going, uh, who are changing jobs, countries, how they, how they perceive this as, oh, I'm scared that something is going to happen, something is, uh, will be the end, I will need to come back, I will be embarrassed, somebody else, of course, can do this, but not me. So when we hear this, in communication that means that the person most probably not ready to step forward yeah would would that be a good wording i'm not sure not ready you mean not ready to move forward yeah i see there is this contrast between um, again a phrase that characterizes growth mindset which is i like to try new things versus a phrase that defines fixed mindset and says I stick to what I know and this is exactly what you are describing I'd rather stick to what I know it's safe here I'm not ready to do this step forward and then in contrast with I like to try new things if I really like to try new things I won't be scared I will just do this step forward. But then, yes, there are moments in which we are not ready. And then it's safer to stick to what I know, to be in my comfort zone, 
not by chance is it comfort zone. It brings me comfort. It makes me feel good. There probably should be a balance between the two. Not always should everyone in any situation jump into search the for new. novelty. Yeah, like yeah. if there is too much novelty, <laughs> there is uh, too much entropic uh, yeah, component, which uh, <laughs> doesn't make it <laughs> absolutely doable yeah, to live this life full of entropy. Like, no, I'm all for balance, you know. And uh, then, yes, to say completely, I've got a growth mindset because I always try for novelty. Well, not exactly. I like to try new things. Yeah, it's curiosity that we spoke about. It's uh, desire to try new things. And uh, if instead of trying new things, when I feel this curiosity, I still prefer to stick to my routines, then I'm making the choice for the fixed mindset and not the growth mindset, I think this. What's the opposite of growth? Stagnation. It's interesting how fixed seems to be something that doesn't change. Fixed also means repaired. Working just good, if we think of words. Growth is something that grows like Goes higher, forward. bigger, wider, larger, faster, stronger. Dun, 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 dun. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm seeing it <laughs> again. I I do apologize from our audience that it's the third time you hear me singing. No, the fact is, uh, most um, podcast platforms don't allow you to put music on your episodes. So. Yeah, for copyright, we have to sing here by ourselves. What else can I do? <laughs> you have to just... Faster, <laughs> harder, stronger, yeah. Or, but fixed, that means like um, somebody else fixed it? Do you see here, like as a past mm -hmm. participle, some mm -hmm. kind of a passivity being yeah, passive it about so. it? It can feel so. And that is like, it's... It's a, again the question of responsibility. If you are ready to take the responsibility of something bigger, higher, harder, like a new job, or for example, if you are doing in your job, like for example, three different items, you are managing three units or teams or countries or I don't know classes, and then your manager says, "Do you want the four, the number four?" And then the question is like. Am I enough? Is this too much? Do I have the resource? Do I want to go there? Do I have to challenge myself? Or do, like, there are so many questions and it's, I would say it would be unfair to judge people in such situations as fix or a gross mindset. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question is, do you remember that film when um, like, should I get the promotion? Uh, a man asks his wife and wife answers should I take the promotion it's a lot of new responsibility oh then don't take the promotion but this is so much of the opportunity oh then take the promotion then do take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this is too much of the responsibility then don't take it <laughs> but this is so <laughs> much of opportunity take that now <laughs> yeah that was a funny thing <clears throat> um, reading from the description of growth mindset now, and yeah. it says challenges help me to grow. So do take new responsibilities, do accept new challenges. Then, yeah, it but says if you want to grow, probably you are closer. If you want to grow, exactly. If you want to grow, if not, I don't like to be challenged is uh, a phrase describing a person sticking rather to a fixed mindset. But now the more we talk about it, the more I see this as a continuum and not as extremes. Not as yeah, opposites. so what, what I was trying to understand is like one is growing and one is not stagnating, but not growing. Yeah, so just like having the fixed comfort zone box or I don't know, swamp. <laughs> 
whatever you call it. it. I don't think it can work possibly in the changing world and the world is changing. Almost. You cannot just stick to this comfort zone forever. Do you remember Alice from the Wonderland? Oh yeah. If you want to stay in the same place, you need to run very fast. If you want to go move forward, you need to run even faster. Alice in Wonderland is just wonderful because, uh, yeah, expressing yourself in front of a drug addict and then staying sane. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we talked already about the um, how the people with growth mindset uh, see the challenges as something to avoid or something to embrace. Mm -hmm. I think here it is like readiness in the word embrace and the void is just like rejecting. If challenges could reveal that a person is lacking some experience, some skill, I'm scared that I'm not enough, I'm scared I cannot do it. That would be a fixed mindset. And if the challenges are perceived as an opportunity to grow, as in possibility to move forward you know the very chance to try and to develop then we can see that the challenges give the people with the fixed mindset a tendency to give up easily tendency to to give up easily while the people yeah, who are more this. persistent they develop this experience yeah. of overcoming, of um, being consistent in uh, pursuing your aim. And um, on this way, there is also another important issue, such as feedback and how people react to feedback. Mm -hmm. Because once I uh, draw something and my uh, teacher, colleague, friend, uh, someone says it's not good enough, do I give up in this case because uh, this feedback was negative? Or do I continue? Do I practice? Do I ask for more constructive feedback? Do I ask what could be improved instead of just giving up and saying, ah, oh, okay, someone said I can't do it, so I won't try anymore. And this also puts me on some point on this continuum, mm -hmm. seeing how, like, how I react to feedback and what this feedback can bring me as an actor, as a person doing something, trying to do something, trying to achieve the goals, and uh, how important other people's opinions are, and how can I use other people's feedback, opinions, uh, evaluation, praise, uh, criticism on my way to perfection. To perfection, that already sounds... Of course, of course. <laughs> that sounds, <laughs> sounds scary. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as we um, said previously, better done than perfect. But then on our way to perfection, we rather do something than give up. Yeah, yeah. The feedback uh, is somehow very dependent on the culture. So... I'm not talking only about countries. I'm not talking about uh, generations or only on, I don't know, the way women or men perceive uh, the feedback or the culture. I mean, cultural identity that is that con consists of the uh, gender, religion, background, historical, social, economical, uh, country like all of this all of those things and the problem is that feedback is sometimes seen as the criticism as something only negative and it's only now like for for the last what 25 30 years people are starting to uh, learn how to give feedback to have the theories to to have the master classes webinars 
I don't know, courses on giving feedback. Okay, let's talk about the response, not only criticism, just a response, not necessarily negative. If the person yeah, really feedback to what another person is doing. Yeah, so if the person gets defensive, that's already a good thing to start thinking. Maybe I should try to get it to take it less personal and more like a possibility to identify the areas where to improve, where how to make it useful, how to make it a point to grow, right? A, you know, this. Rather than a point to give up. Exactly. Rather so than this... a point to give up. Yeah, be, because that's the very moment when you hear it, you make a decision in your head. Right? Do I need to fight or freeze? You know, fight, flight, freeze. And if you dec decide to fight back, no, not even fight back, but to get defensive about why you're telling this to me. Why am I the only one to, to look, be told this? Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look at Alex, he didn't do this at all. Or Who are you to say this to oh, me? Oh, that's my favorite. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and like t getting really defensive because you take it personally. Another one which I think we didn't mention, not only who are you to say this to me or look at yourself or Alex did something even worse and also, I, but I only uh, spent 10 minutes and not 40 for doing this. Self-defense meaning I would have done better if I had spent more time. Yeah, okay, but this is not relevant. Well, why I'm didn't saying, you? <laughs> yeah, or why didn't you? It's not relevant at all. Like if I say, uh, look, the sound on this podcast leaves much to be desired. And you reply, but uh, I didn't even edit it. Yeah, okay, but how is it relevant to the fact the sound is bad? You should have spent more time on doing the task or you should have cared more, etc. And uh, the... Uh, fact of saying but i only and then defense is just another way of reacting uh, improperly to feedback yeah you know this setting back and blaming others is such a good excuse to get discouraged oh i didn't do this exercise because I didn't understand where to get the audio or uh, what to do, or I didn't, I didn't understand the instruction, so I decided not to do it. And now you have the excuse that something discouraged you, somebody else did something wrong, and now you have all the excuse not to do anything. That's a very good sign that something <laughs> should be fixed. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, okay. And when yeah. you fix the fixed, yeah, here it's interesting. When you fix the fixed, do you get growth? I think you get out of the comfort zone first. <laughs> either, you, either you, uh, you know, sink or think. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, that's good. We can make it as a, uh -huh. yeah, our next a quote. wisdom okay, quote. Next quote. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wisdom quotes are also a good way to um, uh, get a quick checkup on uh, whether I agree or disagree with this. How does that uh, work for me? How do I perceive this phrase? And when I read a quote, I react in a certain way. And uh, it can also be uh, significant to me in like understanding, aha, uh -huh, okay, if I react like this, what does it say to me about myself? Well, here we come to the awareness point. Also, and, I, mm -hmm. and this is a very important thing. Nevertheless, we were talking about the awareness a couple of episodes ago. Mm -hmm. It's... The question between the me perspective, I, me, and myself, or the we perspective, 
or the other, the third person perspective, or all of us perspective. So when person starts thinking in these categories, I think that the feedback is perceived as something useful, something to improve, something to work harder next time, something not to be self-blaming, but a reason to take a time and uh, meditate upon it, contemplate what, when, how, and why can be done different. It's interesting that, again, the way you formulate feedback either provokes setbacks, too many backs now, or pushes not you forward. Not by chance, I think. Not, yeah, by, not chance by chance at all. Yeah. But the question is how to move forward, how to make the breakthrough, how to collaborate with people, how to facilitate the, pro the process. This is... This is something that we have right now a lot, like the boom of the facilitation, collaboration, you know, cooperation and so on, because people understand that the best working unit is a team which wants to be there, which desires to be together and wants to achieve each particular, like any particular goal, but together supportive growing you see like when you understand that by giving support by giving feedback somebody supports you that's completely different setting or mindset i was thinking while you were describing this i was thinking uh, whether teamwork or group work uh, wasn't something that um, prevents staying too long in the comfort zone in a team you usually tend to overcome the limits and to go out. Like, what do we do with friends when we meet? We go out. And this uh, going out together is at the same time going out of the box of uh, fixed mindset. You don't normally stay in the same comfort zone together with other people. You motivate one another and then you tend to leave this comfort zone faster and with uh, support so it's not that stressful or frightening or frustrating so together you can do more on the way along this continuum from fixed to growth mindset curious about what we discuss next Join us at facebook.com forward slash live and learn podcast.